everybody, welcome once again to another episode of the SMG Solar Music Group First Ram Radio Podcast in studio. Our special guest today is an actress, singer, performer, all around entertainer. Um, we're definitely going to take some time for those of you who don't know her to introduce her to you, but we're going to go through her resume, which is quite lengthy. Okay. This is in studio. Music Matisse, my co-host, the one and only. First fam chill in the building. Right. And we like to put our hands together today and welcome actress, singer, dancer, all around hella fine entertainer, Miss Tasha Scott. Give her a round of applause, people. How are you? Hello, guys. How you I doing? Am wonderful. <laughs> good, good, good. I'm good. <laughs> First and foremost, um, we want to thank you for taking the time out to sit down and conversate with us. Um, we're hoping where you are out on the West Coast, you and your family are safe. Um, but we have a lot to cover. You have a very extensive resume. So with that being said, the floor is yours. Um, if you can, give us a little background where you were born. Um, how you grew up, where you grew up, prior to entering the industry. Woo! Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, as uh, you all know, my name is Tasha Scott. I go by I go by Tasha Scott, of course, because that's what you can look up and see. But I mm -hmm. am AKA Moon Child, AKA okay. Skater Girl, AKA Pink, and so many other AKAs, and I absolutely love it. <laughs> I'm not mad yes, at you. I'm not I am mad at just... you. <laughs> Absolutely. But I am just a wonderful being, beautiful soul, much I give to myself, as they call me in Kentucky, Little Miss Soul Tasha Scott. I'm originally from Louisville, Kentucky, uh -huh. and uh, that's where I started my singing career at the tender age of eight. That's when I went professional. I started oh. singing when I was five and I went professional at eight. Uh, I started out uh, singing uh, in um, talent shows. I wanted to, I told my mom I wanted to sing. I, I was at the uh, rec center in the project, 3878 Grady Building 62. Shout out to my hood. <laughs> all right now, give it up for the hood all the time. All the time. <laughs> I was there just, you know, just playing around and I heard music and I peeked in and I said, wow, that's what I want to do. I went up in there and I asked them if I could be on the talent show. They told me no. So no one tells, no one tells Tasha no. no. <laughs> I just right. can't say no one tells me no and no one tells me what I can and cannot do. <laughs> so I ran I home and I told my mom, yo, mom, they won't let me sing. And she looked at me and she said, you want to sing? Are you ready for this? Because she knew basically all about the industry because my mom was kind of like in the industry. She was a promoter. She was a dancer. She was a singer. Okay. All the above. So I told her, yes, that's what I wanted to do. So she marched me back up to the rec center. Mm -hmm. And they was like, oh, lady, you know, it's closed. You can't have her in here. So my mom with the big mind that she had. Oh, that's okay. Her uncle's down here. My uncle was not there to film me, but there, she said he worked there, but he wired. <laughs> most down. So he basically was an engineer. Mm. There. Oh, so, okay. Um. Anyway, are, are you guys still there? Okay. Yep. Okay. So mm -hmm. it, yeah. So they was like, oh no, no, wait, 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 come on in, come on in. So back then, of course, uh, you sang to forty five. So I was singing to a 45, uh, a group by the name New Birth, and it was a yeah. song called Until It's Time For You To Go. Okay. So I sang that, I sang that, I won all across the board, and from there, I was just hitting all the talent shows there, the Black Expo, every talent show that there was. And mm -hmm. uh, I just, I moved my way up in Kentucky uh, with an eight-piece band on every uh, television station there, uh, all, all in your, all in the nightclub. I was a nightclub singer starting at the tender age of eight and a half. Wow. Uh, all around Kentucky. So basically, I got so big in Kentucky. This is the story of how to become a star. 
<laughs> so mm. I got so big in Kentucky that um, I told my mom, I told my mom, uh, basically, there's nothing else here to do. And by that time when I told her that I was 10, so you go figure, 8, 9, 10, three years, I became so big in Kentucky, and I told my mom that we needed to move to a bigger city to make it happen, to make the dream happen. Mm -hmm. So she was down for it. Ten-year-old kids telling their their mom that they needed to move to a bigger city. So it was either yeah. New York or Los Angeles. My mother had uh, she she uh, put a skating party together. Not, not, now, mind you, my mother did a lot of uh, production there, um, breaking a lot of new artists and everything. And I was basically always the headliner uh, with an eight piece okay. band. So mm. anyway, we were sitting in the project, sitting at the table, we were eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with me and my brothers in turn. We flipped the coin and it was either New York or LA. I couldn't remember if it was heads or tails. Anyway, we got Los Angeles, California. <laughs> wow. So we moved here. What she did was she sold all her furniture. She took the money that she had uh, from the skating party and we uh, she bought tickets, Greyhound bus tickets, five suitcases, those big old trunk suitcases, and right. she moved all of her children, single mom, single mom, single mom, with a dream, my dream, uh, wow. five children to Los Angeles, California, five suitcases. When we arrived in Los Angeles, California, it was at the Greyhound bus station, downtown LA. Like I said, five suitcases, five children, and a single mom. We didn't know anything. 10 years old, where we were going to live, what we were going to eat, or what we were going to do. Mind you, when we got here, she had $50 in food stamps. Mind wow. you, start in the ghetto. Start in the ghetto. Dream. So mm -hmm. we got here. She had a number in her pocket, in her purse, a number of a guy here. And she called him, and he had a, he, he, he had a house in Compton. Mm -hmm. He let us stay there for a year and a half. All my mother said was, all that I needed to do was basically get like I did in Kentucky. So she was a talker. Right. She got me in there. They was like, oh, lady, you crazy. This kid is only 10 years old. She can't be in here. We start alcohol. So much adult things going on. My, my mama said, well, she did it in Louisville. She's going to do it here. She's hmm. about to give <laughs> Wow. So anyway, once again, started mm -hmm. all over here in California. I was moving up the ladder, moving up, you know, not, not the chart, but I was moving up the ladder, the stardom ladder. ladder. Mm -hmm. And I just started meeting so many people uh, from Marla Gibbs to Sherman Hensley, mm -hmm. uh, my agent, you know, just, just meeting people just by my mom believing in me and knowing how to talk that talk. Not right. even, not really knowing the business, but right. knowing the business and believe in me and I believe in her. So basically, I started working, 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 and we met somebody one day. I I can't recall, maybe it was in the club or it was just somewhere we, we met somebody. That, they said that I needed an agent. I got a story, mm. y'all. I got a book already ready for it. And she basically prepped me and, you know, uh, just to say, this is what it's going to be. You are not going to be around your peers. You're going to be around older people. But she told me, well, this is what Michael Jackson did. This is what Sammy Davis Jr. did. This is what uh, all these uh, uh, elephants, sure, all these great people that she said, well, this is how they started. So take it. And I did. And mm -hmm. basically, I say as a kid, it made me basically feel like I was a star. And yeah. I had control over all these adults. <laughs> <laughs> so that's so what kept you coming back. Did, that's what kept me coming back. And then I'm going to tell you another thing that kept me coming back. Because my voice was so angelic and just powerful that the people could not resist to just give me money. They was giving me hundreds, two hundred, fifties, and I'm like, well, what is this? Is this is this is this stardom? But you know what I knew about that was it was gonna put food on my table, yes. shoes and clothes on me and my brother's back. Yep. And keep the, the, the gas and the lights paid. So basically I 
And as now Tasha becomes simply getting the family out of the project to have a better life. I always sat in my room. I always sat in my room and I, and I always said, this is not for me. This is not for me. I see bigger. My mom said when I was born, I had my thumb in my mouth and my pinky was up. So she said right there, that's princess quality, queen quality. Right. So I have to surround her with that. I have four brothers. I'm the only girl on my mother's side. Wow. And so she just saw that that was, that I was queen, princess, mm -hmm. royalty. And she always like put me in that light. I couldn't go outside and play. I couldn't hang out with my friends most of the time because my mom had me so focused in right. on my career. And I thank her for that. You know what I'm saying? Right. I, I, I really do. I thank her for that. So basically, that, no fear after that. It was no fear. I had, I just felt like I had the adult world in the palm of my hand mm. uh, just with my voice. And I always looked at it like this. These are the steps you take to get to Michael Jackson's status, Sammy Davis Jr.'s status, right. uh, 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 Whitney Houston's status. These are the steps because these are also the stories that my mom would tell me. This is how they started, and mm -hmm. this is what you got to do. And so me being around it and people asking me to come to Vegas. I headlined Vegas one time. I was like I was about 11 or 12. Uh, uh, oh, go figure. You know, and I just think I just felt like those were the steps to becoming a star, and just hearing those, those people's st stories that they that they told me that Michael Jackson told me he said this is exactly how I started, and he says mm. you are star quality, you got that it thing. You know, all of them said when I was in Kentucky, if you get to L.A., you are for sure to become a star, because mm. you are you are in the lane with the great. <laughs> well, I, mean, I gotta. Uh, I, I want to ask you one question, right? Because you mentioned Kentucky. Sure. And I got family out in Kentucky. Be watching. What's going on, everybody? What's up, Louisville? Hey, y'all. Got family all in Louisville. Louisville. Now, um, are you familiar with a little town called uh, Newburgh? Yes, I am. My, uh, my, I, if I'm correct. My auntie still lives there, or I don't know if she's moved there, but I do believe that she is still in the house that I used to visit a lot in Newburgh. Yeah. Uh, that uh, was, um, at that time, Newburgh was rich, rich, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Music Matisse, she's officially from Kentucky. I just had to, no further questions. You you just had to find yeah, out. My, my, my I had to auntie find out she there. officially. My auntie lives she there. Got it. We <laughs> might be related. Uh, well, see, that was, my, <laughs> that was my next question, Tasha, to him. <laughs> like you sure that you're not related? Yeah, I'll, hey, this, yeah. it's, it's possible. Girl. It's possible. Come on, maybe I can remember. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I don't know. Go ahead. If you familiar with any staples or um? What are they to you? You know Kim Staples. That is my cousin. That's my cousin. <laughs> Get Dang, out of here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Interview uh, down. I'm about to shut the whole interview down. Now, but this is why we had. This is why we had the technical difficulty. Oh man! Because now we reunite in family Yo, members that's in the studio. Right How crazy on. is that? Yo, hold on. I gotta take some water. Hold on, y'all. I got only. Yeah. Tony Staples, come on. Oh, Tony, Tony Staples, Staples, yeah. Come on. I got that's a picture. My, Tony came out and seen. Tony came out and seen me last, like two months before the uh, the whole Corona thing. But you know, shout out to Tony's uh, Shark Mob Strizzy. Shout out to the family. What's oh, up? Man. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. The world is this. Bananas. This the world. The way the world works. Yeah, you? man. The way the world yeah. is. Oh man, I need some more water. I, I, that's a so beautiful crazy. thing. Man. So many people come. So many people come and say, say cousin, cousin, cousin. I really don't know a lot of my extended cousins. I only know the immediate family, mm. to tell and you the you, truth. You yeah, know you said the town. Family, like you, I would have never known. I, me neither. We, we just been doing an interview. Wow. And, yeah, so you know where I'm from then. Oh, uh, yeah, you for real. She's a so Christian. you know where I'm from. I'm from, I'm from Southwick. I'm from Southwick. I just want to go back to some things, and we're and we going to go back to front. 
Now, obviously, your belief in yourself and the belief in your talent came from a very young age. Um, the things that your mother did for you, the sacrifices she made without question, as a parent, that took a lot. So the reward has been you have a resume. What you have, I think, that has separated you from a lot of your peers, you've had an all-around career. Because if you, it, just going down the line of everything you said before, let's talk TV. You're on Star Search, which at the time, for those who don't know and may not be familiar with Star Search, Star Search back in, in the late 80s, um, and I believe early 90s, if I'm not mistaken, if I'm not dating myself, was basically that era's version of American Idol, that era's version of like The Voice and talent shows like that. So to even be selected on there, Destiny's Child was on there before they became Destiny's Child. Aaliyah was on there before she, and I believe if I'm not mistaken, both of them lost. Yes. You know, um, you had Sinbad who was on there. Justin Timberlake. Yeah, there you go. You know, so it's like for you to even be considered as a child and as a <laughs> minor, the, 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 you know, the opportunity to even pass all of those you know, uh, auditions and everything. That in itself was amazing. Then you go on, as you said before, to Amen. So that puts you on screen, screen time with someone like Sherman Helmsley. Okay, now what kind of experience was that like? Cause I'm going basically show by show. And even with 227, Marla Gibbs, him and her came from a classic television show from the Jefferson. So what was that experience like just being around them on set, even if it was for yeah. just one episode? Oh my God, it was truly amazing. They welcomed me uh, with this open arm. Mm -hmm. uh, I was young, of mm -hmm. course. I think I was about six, 14, 15 ish. Mm -hmm. So they were being very, very careful because I was a minor, but mm -hmm. I was always older here. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I still played with the children and everything, but I was still older here because I had been around so many adults. But right. they handled me with care and I absolutely loved it. And out of and out of all of their mouths, they basically I've always heard they said, You are you are rare. You are a mm -hmm. gem. Uh there's not much polishing that you need. <laughs> so and I have been hearing these things throughout mm -hmm. my life. You know what I'm saying? So I just I welcomed that and I opened my arms to that and I just knew that it was all coming from a good place mm -hmm. and uh, that I was on the right road. I was really on the right road to stardom. And from those connections, of course, came other connections. They introduced me to just, just people. You know, like I said, I, I would do uh, uh, a, a lot of the, the uh, award shows back then. I, I can't even really recall some of them, but I would be opening up and uh, with the orchestra. I would be the center wow. of attention to get the awards, you know. And mm. so a lot of this stuff I see on TV, it, and, and they're like in their 52nd anniversary. Those shows started out with like the first show getting the first awards. I got right. these awards in stores. Like I can't even recall some of them. So mm. it was just a full on blessing. Right. To be able to work with those people. Sherman, excuse me, uh, Miss Marley Club called.